Bujuani, everyone. Um, hello, Solomon Indijnikas. My name is Solomon, and I am one of the Mesa student coordinators for Native American Heritage Month this year. Um, before we get started with today's event, I'd like to acknowledge the Anishinaabek communities and the Three Fires Nation land on which we stand. As a member of the Little Traverse Bay Band of Odawa, I find it extremely important to acknowledge Michigan's foundation, which is our indigenous people. This land shows us how we should take care of it and how it should take care of us. So thank you to my elders and all my relations for making these events possible. Okay, so tonight's event will consist of two parts. We invite you to put questions that come up into the chat box throughout the event, and we will plan on committing communicating those to our presenters during the dedicated Q&A portion, which is going to happen after part two. Um, at this time, I have the great honor of introducing my language teachers here at the University of Michigan. Alphonse Pitawanaqua and Kayla Gonian for part one. The language we learn as kids is the same language we speak as adults. Um, Alphonse Pitawanaqua is a certified language inspector through the Lakehead University in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. His first language is Anishinaabe Moen, and he is an enrolled member of the Wikwemkong Unceded Indian Reserve on Manitoulin Island, Canada. He has been teaching the language for over 10 years here at the university, and he before that he was working at G. Um, as a general supervisor in plant engineering and manufacturing. And he worked there for 33 years. So right now, um, there's also Kayla Gonian who began studying Anishinaabe Muin in 2010 as an undergraduate student at here U of M. And she's been working with Alphonse as an assistant in the program since 2012. She also completed a master's in linguistics at Eastern in 2019. So please join me in welcoming um, Alphonse and Kayla. Ani. Ani. Miigwech, Solomon. All right. Okay, we're starting uh, with our title here. The language we learn as kids is the same language we speak as adults. Uh -oh. Next. Can you move it to the left a little bit? Um. No, I can't move it. Okay. Well, hmm. So I decided. Oh. Hold on a sec. Is this better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, um, quite often I get uh, notices uh, from people wanting to know this about the language and so on, um, how it is in my region and how it should be said and taught. Uh, so what happens, I get a lot of messages with requests on how they should say uh, the, the words that they're working on. And I, I get messages through the websites as well. It, and uh, they're all different. And it seems to me, no matter what you say, nobody seems to hear that uh, uh, the, the languages or the dialects are, are different. They, they vary quite a bit. Although it's the same language, uh, some of them are a little different or sound different. So I thought, well, maybe the way I have, I have to do this is to inform the public about that at the uh, 
language conference, which I've done a number of times on different subjects. And I did it once. I did this once uh, oh, about eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, something similar to it to talk about the language, how it should be taught and the differences that we have. And uh, it's something we have to accept that uh, you can't uh, change the language midterm uh, while you're working on it. It just doesn't work that way. So uh, back home where I'm from, uh, I decided to uh, get some information from what they were doing over there. I have uh, a booklet that uh, gives information about it. The Wequemecon Board of Education uh, was uh, began implementing the uh, language immersion programming in 2005. The Hub Center and the Wasab and Junior School uh, introduced the immersion programming for the students, which consisted of 50% Nishinaabe language and English language over the course of the day while the Hub Center will, was focusing on the immersion for all the students, that fall the junior school was implementing the immersion programming for the kindergarten garden students. My, my sister, my younger sister was a teacher there. I asked her uh, how, the, how it went. And she said how they did that immersion was uh, uh, taking them out uh, uh, to uh, study nature. That's how that's the that's how the language is based on nature. And so that's how they start learning it. And I do remember years and years ago. Uh, that's how I learned my language. And we were always out there, out in the woods, by the lakes, by the waters, lakes, uh, rivers, streams, and we got to know a lot of things, names of things, and that's how we learned about nature. So, uh, next one. So in that immersion program, the responsibilities of the parents was the same. Immersion uh, was the most effective method known for learning a second language. Early immersion worked so well because of a, because a young child lacks lacks uh, self-consciousness, prejudice, negativism, and loves mimicry, memorization, and repetition. Early immersion provides more working, my time working in a second language and more time results in more learning. So in the kindergarten, uh, the teacher speaks to the class only in the when although the children often continue to use English especially among themselves. So taking kids out to nature to learn the language is the best way to do it. As my sister said, uh, it worked very well for that, for starters, doing it that way. Um, the recommendations put out by the Ministry of Education out there were uh, quite different from that. So, and those, Nobody thought would work, so they, they went their own way. They're still doing it though. Okay, so this is their uh, curriculum for the youngsters, the Hub Center. And everything on the left side of that uh, chart there is the month of the year. And, and it's written in Ojibwe. Wabobagagis is that's in September. And it talks about uh, what happens in September, the things, the main things that happen uh, in uh, September. They usually have fall fairs. And we call that season uh, early fall, the Goge. The Goge is the Ojibwe word for it. There are others from uh, uh, different tribes, other names from different tribes. But uh, they all refer to the same thing. Uh, uh, the leaves turning color and then starting to fall. And then we go on to the second month, uh, Benakwegizis, which is October. That's part of the Dwagis uh, season, early fall. Uh, so 
you have uh, those things happening in the fall. Miigwechi uh, is good, Thanksgiving. Uh, harvesting food. To say on the Halloween and the uh, All Souls Day. And then we go on to November. That's the Remembrance Day. And then we also have Enkijik, uh, the occupations. We talk about winter clothing. And uh, we move on to the Mnidawo Gisons, uh, that's December, Baboten, uh, winter, Baboten is the winter, Yvonnemong, Christmas, Jim Nido, uh, creator, the God. And then we, in January, we have uh, Mnidawo Gisons, Kimagi Shagat, the King's Day, Baboten, And that was it, winter fun. And Kogis um, is February. Kokushishigi Shagat, that's the ground, the groundhog day occurs then. And Kwa, Pons, the bear cub, Sage Dwingi Shagat, Valentine's Day. Uh, before, uh, Groundhog's Day, uh, what has become uh, a Groundhog's Day used to be um, Kogishgat. Uh, the, uh, the bear coming out of hibernation was uh, referred to as as a determining day when uh, winter would be over rather than the Groundhog Day somewhere along the line that changed. Okay, so then we go to Navadinigisis, which is in March. Pashkwanarji uh, is got St. Patrick's Day. Kumi, spring, Mnokume. Mnokume is the season, by the way. That's the springtime. And then we go into April. This is about the Kegisis. That's the uh, making maple syrup month. And no um, come is a uh, springtime. Balkong takes place in that period, which is Easter. And Shkak uh, is starting to uh, appear in a different color. You know, in other words, the snow is melting in that period of time, and everything is starting to grow, mother earth. And then we go into May, Mevnegisis. Uh, Mother's Day occurs in that period of time, and everybody talks about that. And Oskone, uh, Oskone, the flowers start appearing. Okanak, farm animals start appearing in pastures. And that's the planting season. And then June is the last uh, last month of uh, the school year. Wabagonegi is this. The don't say suck. Insects start appearing. And uh, Father's Day takes place there. No sigishrat. And then we go into July, mean geezes, July. And that's when uh, summer activities start to take place, such as uh, powwows. Okay, and then uh, we go into August. No geezes, August. That's when um, Harvesting, a lot of harvesting takes place. Okay, that's okay, more than so enough. Then, oh, yep, we've got this. Okay, this is uh, one way, uh, it's been expressed to me historically that this is the way a lot of people were writing the language at one time. 
And uh, I wouldn't recommend that anybody do this. It's very hard to decipher. And I've done a lot of transcriptions and I had a lot of trouble with it because uh, you're always missing a sound when you do that. So just showing what it looks like, uh, you know, what people used to talk about, the, they said the language is all in syllables. Well, maybe so it's in syllables when you, when you speak the language, but you have to have the words showing. And it doesn't happen when you write it this way. You don't know where the word starts or where, where it ends. Okay. So these are the words that the kids at the Hub Center start learning when they uh, when they get into class. No matter what we sit on the chair, we snin, eat, quimno quena. Do you want a drink? Nogmena, nogme. Tastes good. The liquid. It's tasting good. Uh, and it goes on to Ambeg Wajin Shada, let's go outside. Kabam uh, Seme, we'll go for a walk. Jagavik, line up, let's go outside and pray. Ambeg Wajin, Padam Nada, We Nidam Nunk, Dam Nun, Dam Nuk, play nicely together. Nangach, slow down. Memesh could take turns. Uh, and then Kidway Nanda, this, this is the start of the school year. Kidway Nanda for the Wabagagis uh, is at September. That's when the leaves start changing color. And this, these are the words they learn as they start school. And these are the same words you will be using throughout life if you speak the language. Nin means me, Wizens the boy, Kwezens Wizens, Anishinaabe, native. And on deck, colors, squande, red, jawande, zawande, yellow, minande, blue, upskande, white. Anish Nagei, how are you? Minogi Shagat, nice day. That's the beginning of the school year. There is a bunch more of these uh, listed in that booklet I'm referring to, but I just picked out a few so that we can get this done in. I think I was told 29 minutes. Dwoge uh, is a fall season. That's how you. That's how we say fall. Dwoge. Miigwechigishgat whippy. At that time, it's Miigwechigishgat Thanksgiving Day. Pemajilik people benakwe benakwe falling leaves. Nibish nibishan leaves. To say one Halloween. In that way, not numbers. These are the things that come up in in classes in October, and then we go into November. Babod, it is winter by then in that territory. So the kids learn about uh, winter clothing. Babod nikwinan, wikwad, hat, jikawnak mets, eknomayet, teacher, shimagnish, soldier. Soldiers' Day takes place in November. Jamagni Shigish got Remembrance Day. Sinagojing is not in the Bingech. It's cold outside. I am cold. Now we go into December. Words from Nidogisons. Kid women from Nidogisons in December. You talk about snow. Go nest. Snowflakes. Go car. There is snow. Marjizokpo. It is starting to snow. Nibanamang is Christmas. Nangos is the star. Nido, spirit. Nagamda, let's sing. Tamnoasan, toys. Santa Claus being coming around in that period of time. Kidavinan from Nido Jesus, which is January. Ani Bojo. Hello. That's when they. People greet each other for uh, welcoming New Year's. Shushkichiwe, sliding, shushkwadwe, to skate. Chiwut, stormy. 
Chagod Ka, lots of snow. Nim Kudadim, wishing Happy New Year. And we go into February. Kedwe Nun from Koyesis, February. Degish got Valentine's Day, Zagedwen, love, Kokudish, Kwa, grounding, groundhog or bear in reference to that period of time. Kokudish is got Groundhog Day. Then we go into March. Where the forest animals start uh, uh, reappearing after the uh, heavy snow. Um, the beavers start showing up, mekok, shingos, weasels, wobbles, oh, is always around in the winter time. Uh, Nabden, crusted snow, humika, icy. April, there's a lot happening in April. That's when, uh, that's what we call spring, mnokome. Bakwang, there's Easter, and Yigon Suk Pindigayok. The smelts uh, start coming up rivers. Which tag Yigon smoke fish is May. Savis, Savis, a net. Uh, is made, see beans, the stream is talked about, and I'll take maple tree, see the back of the camp, uh, making maple syrup, the wog mede maple syrup, see the back of the, see the back of the cotton, maple syrup camp, pitch starts appearing, the robin, come one, it starts to rain, it's cool, Nimki it starts thundering about that time and wood is foggy. As it warms up, it starts, the snow melts and uh, it gets foggy. Okay, and then May. And that's when the sucker fish start coming, starts coming into the, to spawn in the rivers. And uh, the Mebene, Penishia, uh, the birds start appearing. Okanuk farm animals are out on the field. Marshtan Shuk, Marshtan Shans, and Wabgunojiak start appearing, the mouse, Shabus, goat. Jiman, canoe, canoe, our boat, Daban, car, bus, jigan, airplane, Pim Squab, Skigan, bicycle, Pinoji, Davanes, strollers start appearing. Wawoskone, flower. Mishkos, grass. These are the words those kids are learning, kindergartners and the first graders. And then June is the last uh, last school month. Summer starts in that period of time, and we call that Nibin. Kishate, it is sunny, it is hot. Today, when strawberries start growing, Bashkabgwane uh, blooming, Guinea, the roses start appearing, Andeguk, Sageok, the crows start cockeying out there, Nem Kibine Shin, Thunderbird, Nudol Shin Suk, insects, insects appear on on the ground, Obodo Squadnishi, Dragonfly, Monsin, Caterpillar, Signar, Swarm, Memangwa, butterfly, and goose, and goose, ant. Okay, that'll be the end of the first presentation, and we go on to the next. Uh, Oops, one more slide, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, well, we won't bother doing that one. All right. It's That's not ready. part of the school year. Uh, so we go into the science uh, curriculum uh, for middle schoolers. Uh, this was actually uh, made for middle, middle schoolers, and I translated that about nine years ago, 10 years ago, uh, to present it to middle schoolers. So this is how it went. Uh, I, I didn't cover everything because, uh, you know, this is supposed to be a one hour presentation. Fish, Kigon, Kigon Ke, Swim, Begiza, Boat, Shiman. Mukroe, Nib in the Bishing, boat in the water, drink, Nikwe. Next. 
the water in the beach, water quality in the beach, Sheshayamuk, the way water is. Ecology, the Kendamadam Nidon Suk Mino. We're all getting to know the creatures and where they live. The community, Etnizot, where they live. This is the very same thing that the kids start to learn when they go out to uh, in the immersion uh, period. They go out to the woods, they go out to the rivers and lakes and they explore. And these are the very same things they are learning in that period of time. Science is uh, the, our word for it is the Kenjigewit, investigation, sorting. A scientist is the one that and the can get one who investigates. I am a scientist and the can get thou an investigator I am working together which in a keen thing we are to, uh, together working, communicating ideas on on Kyadamang, on Kyadamang, Nendamuena, transferring thoughts or information, making recommendations. Making decisions. So we had a project going on with those kids when we did this. Question was, what do we know in in Ojibwe? You say Wenesh What do we need to know? Wenesh Wandakendamung. What do we know now? Wenesh in Kendamung Nungwa. What is our evidence when it's uh, about the bomb jigam gok? What has been measured when it's got the bishgadek? What does it mean for the big question when it's in the dagok chikidwinan? What does it make us think about the big question? There's a lot of good grammar. In in this in these sentences, too. Uh, slope is uh, nisakiak going downhill, flow nisa nisajak going down downward as water erosion, pakwe kabul budek being taken apart due to the water flow, deposition eskabudek ma making deposits, what is left behind. Next. You went the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, technical difficulties. There we go. Uh, predict what will happen. Uh, the the uh, Ojibwe translation for that is uh, Ahead, tell about it. What will happen? Observe what is happening. Observe it. What is happening? Explain what you observed about the Nagawamdaman. Tell about it, what you saw. Land use, ke in Abduk. How land is used, agriculture, to get to gang, to plant or planting. Commercial, Wigwaman, buildings, the Wigwaman stores, the way to sell, you get to make buildings. Wigwam get to build homes, residential. And down a residence, and down to live somewhere. Uh, industrial and Jina King, where work is done. So, tying science to our culture. Dairy reflection topic: What the students got out of the guest scientists' presentations or sessions? How can that be tied to what we are learning? How can that be tied to the story we heard last night? How do we still use the same information methods today? So we had other activities with the students at the site where we did the presentation. Next. So, so there were indicators uh, we looked at uh, with the students measurements and so on about the water uh, insects. How do you determine the quality of water in a community? 
uh, you decide uh, to, whether it's excellent or not in in the language is mamon de nishing good is nishin fair is kega nishin poor nishis no and it's because you have fertilizers and pesticides mojik uh, chigad I think that starts growth, a thing that kills. Now those are the, the that's that's the translation for those Ojibwe words. LG being as a kick in the water plants, fertilizer is mixed in. Magic chickening to go to colors in <coughs> Andagan. And they go through all the colors, Squande, Ishwande, George Squande, Zawande, temperature of the water, Epitogamidek, turbulence, churning water, Nangogamisek, uh, Nangogamis Jigang. I can measure the amount of oxygen in water. I can measure how much air is, is there in the water. Turbidity and whether or not light shines through the water. Uh, I can measure the turbidity of the water. We actually went into the uh, by boat to the water to look at uh, to test the water and to look at uh, everything pertaining to the water problem. So we're coming to the end here. Take only what you need from nature. Bugs tell us about water quality. The bugs can teach us about how the water is. Some microvertebrates can tolerate poor water quality, others cannot. Some can use what is not good. So these are the different uh, uh, things that happen on the land. Herbivores, as Aki get the Mijot. Plants they eat, carnivores, why? We ask Madrot meat they eat, omnivores, eguendic, Madrot, everything they eat, decomposers, nebum guk mijot, eating what's not alive. Predator, nendom jiget, the one that looks for food. The prey, nendom jigazet, the one that is being looked for. Next. This is the next one. And the uh, food, food chain. Me, Jim, and the Nigadek, food where its source is. The food chain, as we sing, the way we eat, the sun, Jesus, he song from the sun. Every food chain starts with the sun. Kinami, Jim, he song, Jimajishka, all food starts from the sun. Produce, producers, can make their own food. Consumers, and then need to get help for food. Okay, and I believe this is our last slide. Yeah. So this is the last one. The ecosystem cannot emerge everything that grows. Abiotic absence of living organisms. Biotic pertaining to life and in our own language Maba versus Manda and the Shnabe get the Maba refers to animate and Manda means uh, inanimate. In English the sun is an abiotic part of an ecosystem. In Nishnabe when Gizes Madze the sun is alive in our 
in our way of thinking. Jesus mugs it. That's where everything is, every supply there is that is happening on earth is generated by the sun. Okay, that's the end of my present, little presentation here. Yep, and I realize I didn't do it yet, but I uh, I told Andrea that I will provide that um, that PowerPoint for you okay. guys to have. So, and I will just add, um, like I said, there's so much good grammar in there. Like we could make a whole bunch of lessons <laughs> for our students just off of that. Alphonse and Kayla. Um, Hello, everyone. My name is Zoe, and I'm glad to be working alongside Solomon as the other undergraduate student coordinator for Native American Heritage Month. I am also a student in Alphonse's Anishinaabe Moment class, so tonight is especially exciting for me. I will now introduce our speakers for part two of this evening, Dr. Cherry Meyer and Dr. Margaret Noden. Cherry Meyer is a member of the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians. She has a PhD in linguistics from the University of Chicago and recently joined the Department of American Culture at the University of Michigan as an LSA Collegiate Fellow. She is enjoying participating in the Ojibwe classes taught by Alphonse and Kayla and is excited to contribute to the development of learning materials in our understanding of Ojibwe as a wellspring of Anishinaabe culture. Margaret Noden received an MFA in Creative Writing and a PhD in English and Linguistics from the University of Minnesota. She is Professor of English and American Indian Studies at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where she also serves as the Associate Dean of Humanities and Director of the Electa Quinney Institute of American Indian Education. She is author of Bawajano, a dialect of dreams in Anishinaabe language and literature, and Wawene and What Chickadee Knows, which are both bilingual collections of poetry in Anishinaabe Mawen in English. Please join me in welcoming Cherry and Margaret. Annie, everyone. Are you here, Margaret? Yeah, I'll see where you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Let's go in here. Do you want to um, do an introduction at all, Meg, or should I go right ahead? You can go right ahead if you like. Okay. <laughs> this is That's the fine. second part of our presentation, how and why we learn Anishinaabe Mawin. Nimikwene Mag Naging, Leonard Minawa James. And we thank the organizers very much for putting this all together. This is an honor of Native American Heritage Month. So, um, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, Leonard Kimiwan, who is pictured here with uh, Margaret Noden and Susan Asquith. Um, so he um, walked on several years ago, but he has taught so many people, um, including myself. I had the joy of working with him uh, for a few summers up in Bawating, uh, Sault Ste. Marie. And I have a little introduction for myself here. Um, oops. Ani mano gijigat wigwas men adijnikaz Michigan and Dojaba nagashi nokmis minawa ndang kobjigan gakina awiwag nishnabekweg nosag awiwag Polish minawa wemti gojiwag linguistics nagi nanda gikendan. Nano babun nagija gikino ma diwag magong odanang migaigo nishwash babon jigagong midash bakan nisitan nishnabemun nuangizwe anwigo nindo majishka nimigichi oh my goodness nimigichi when him iwejo wenj Gwen. Um, okay, so uh, I put the words there so I wouldn't have to do it in English, but just to go quickly through it, 
thank you all for coming here today. It's a good day. Um, I'm from Michigan originally. I have my Ojibwe heritage through my mother's side. And um, I've been studying linguistics for a while. I've been in the Great Lakes region. And uh, I'm not a fluent speaker, but I am learning. And I am excited to be able to share the knowledge about Ojibwe that I do have in the coming years. And uh, this presentation is not about me, though. This is about Leonard. Um, so what we're going to share with you tonight is a recording that was made um, up in Sault Ste. Marie when Margaret was visiting at uh, Susan Asquith's house. And this recording was made at Susan's kitchen table, um, kind of on the fly. But we're really glad that we have this because now um, it's a really great way for us to remember Leonard and to thank him for helping to keep the language alive and share it with all of us. So, what I just did here was go to the Ojibwe.net website. And this is a really great resource for lessons, stories, songs, projects, um, event announcements, et cetera. And you can find the story of Puppies for Sale under um, Advanced. I think it's under, yeah, Lessons Advanced. And, oh, I didn't think about this, but I might. Um, I'll just read this introduction for Leonard here. Originally from a Quemacong unceded Indian reserve on Manitoulin Island, Ontario, Canada, Leonard, Kim Leonard Kimiwan has lived in Michigan for many years, returning frequently to Wiki for family events. He and his wife, Elizabeth, were first speakers of the language and never stopped using it at home and with friends. Some of his children are now teachers at the Anishinaabe Moan. Um, and so I'm gonna read through the English version the translation of the story first, and then we'll listen to the recording so everybody can focus on the words and following along in Ojibwe. Oh, puppies for sale. A farmer had some puppies he needed to sell. He painted a sign advertising the pups and set about nailing it to a post on the edge of his yard. As he was driving the last nail into the post, he felt a tug on his overalls. He looked down into the eyes of a little boy. Mister, he said, I want to buy one of your puppies. Well, said the farmer as he rubbed the sweat off the back of his neck, these puppies come from fine parents and cost a good deal of money. The boy dropped his head for a moment, then reaching deep down into his pocket, he pulled out a handful of change and held it up to the farmer. I've got 39 cents. Is that enough to take a look? Sure, said the farmer. And with that, he let out a whistle. Here, Dolly, he called. Out from the doghouse and down the ramp ran Dolly, followed by four little balls of fur. The little boy pressed his face against the chain link fence. His eyes danced with delight. As the, dog made, as the dogs made their way to the fence, the little boy noticed something else stirring inside the doghouse. Slowly, another little ball appeared. This one noticeably smaller. Down the ramp it slid. Then in a somewhat awkward manner, the little pup began hobbling toward the others, doing its best to catch up. I want that one, the little boy said, pointing to the runt. The farmer knelt down at the boy's side and said, son, you don't want that puppy. He will never be able to run and play with you like these other dogs would. With that, the little boy stepped back from the front, stepped back from the fence, reached down and began rolling up one of his legs of his trousers. In doing so, he revealed a steel brace running down both sides of his leg, attaching itself to a specially made shoe. Looking back up to the farmer, he said, I don't run too well myself, and he will need someone who understands. The world is full of people who need someone who understands. Okay, so now I'm going to start the recording, uh, which is available on the website for everyone to listen to, and there's also a worksheet up for it. And then I'm going to also at the same time put the uh, Nishnabem one up so that we can read along. I think actually the recording stopped when I did that. 
I'm chickening. Okay. We I will pause for a second if anybody wants to bring up the Ojibwe.net. Um, I think it's not going to let me display the Anishinaabe one at the same time, but I'm going to play the recording for you and we can listen. Puppies for sale. You move catching suck. Do the hunting. You want to know what about them all? You want to take a dumb look. What about them all? もう he <laughs> Sim <coughs> Ni win nimu nim nimu sun marshman gizin in gin, even open on goon. Chickening gay be chickening eggy shall our queen way shin we zess. Ye monks kings way ne, ye mommy quaff mod nimu sun. Ji him chick couldn't be out. Nimu suck me gay gay woo ye on dung bean gay woo bean jim, nimu kajigam woos gay woo mascarnic. Me game in Augi, what month? Basic Marshman is an engine, the most of Gotching, Gotching, one game, mean all gangy chalky shin wooden moose. Me does gangy get up. Me so a gay og. Me shank to get an eggy jing in a tot. We zess and nanny with it. We zess, go wig thy yaw or see wooden moose. Kai we ka we skit to see we dum nut mage we met tot to be school and darling. Me the squeezes, he jag up with. Me shmeek and old geek over tot, but a carting and be up concern. He ten on carting, a dwain, me no moccasin, and not mage magok. Me the shagar not to get in one. Kai gaining a skto seen way and we met to one. We are on the wind, man. Nemos can start watching. But in Oak, man, peaking the man's the jig. Then when margin gets a star watching. Ah, me so it. Okay, so it occurred to me as we were halfway through that I could have put the Ojibwe in the chat, but just to show you. Um, there's also a PDF with a word for word um, transcription that Leonard read through. And then there's also a worksheet that Leonard put together so you can study the vocabulary. And so um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Magni to say a few words about uh, another elder that has walked on recently, James Fox. Uh, 
Ani, Maguachin, we Guasman, Gilwin Nodin de Go, Chiwasa, Minnesota, Chishajago, Peak Quaisan, Siwea, Monjabaya, Chik Nomage, Gamagong, Asian, Kadesh, Konagan, Nok Missabani, Gonjabawat, Mina Nongam Daya, Minawaking, Kinomage, Iwede, Minawaking, Wisconsin. Donasake wede Ann Arbor, Dawat, Keabe, Nino Abatinak, Wich Kewak, Onjabawat, Wede Ann Arbor, Michigan. I wanted to just kind of round out, we all bring you completely different views and experiences, but with the same language. And when we were talking about some of the people that have walked on, we wanted to be able to say, some things about how they influenced us. I know that we're coming close to our time here and we wanted to leave time for you to ask questions and actually talk a little bit about how we've learned. Uh, both Leonard Ba and James Ba, um, they taught us so much. And as we think about the time we got to spend with them and what we learned from them, we just wanna make sure that we're doing justice to what they spent time giving us. So I had a little, a few lines that I wanted to read. We've had a lot of uh, parts where you get to see all the words. I guess uh, many of us who are second language learners, some of, sometimes we just have to be the example. I can see from uh, who's here that a few of you, if I just go through and talk a little bit about um, our teachers, it's a good test to see if you can see what I'm saying. I also could uh, transcribe it and write it down for folks later too. We don't ever wanna leave anyone out, but I think that sometimes it's really good for us to be able to just speak off the top of our head and say a few things. So I'll just say a little bit about them both. Um, and, and then really, I think we should go ahead and turn it over to questions. Um, which is just to say I'm, I'm really happy that, that yous are all here and that I get to be here with you, even though I'm far away in Milwaukee tonight, um, to talk about the, the language. Uh, James Ba, Leonard Ba, Minwage Abe, Alphonse, Alphonse, Chinookit, Ewede, Kche, Kromage, Gamigong, Michigan. So Cherry and I together both kind of owe a debt to all of our teachers. In this case, we were thinking about the ones that we had worked with who we are no longer able to work with, but then it also reminds us very quickly that we have Alphonse in our midst and he's still here teaching. So we're very glad for that. These, um, Elders that have come to us from Wikwemekong are very good speakers. Um, we're lucky to have them around and to have been able to spend so much time with them. Uh, they're very good at telling stories, even if we just say that in Anishinaabem, when we kind of divide it in, in two ways. So to say, they are good at telling the kind of regular everyday news type stories, the things they tell us in class, the ways they teach us. Um, but also we would say uh, they are good at telling the kind of stories that we learn from that really stay with us that have been handed down for many, many generations too. So it's a reason to hang on to our language because we could just say they tell good stories in English, but to say that in Anishinaabe when we might want to acknowledge that they tell us different categories of stories than are even available in English. Um, uh, I think it's, it's also important to remember that they've really survived a lot. That's what we look to our elders and kind of know that they've survived many things and they have not forgotten their language. So as we get busy and we start feeling like we might not have time to practice the language or do all the things in the language that we might want to do because life challenges us, I think it's always important to remember that these elders who have been our teachers have survived a great deal as well, and yet they still remembered their language. Um, 
I think another thing, a pi ki the kweskodari yang a pane ego nanda ki ken namang, you know, a bapi yang, they, we would always spend time with them. And when we were meeting with them, there would be things we were looking to learn. And then also they would teach us to laugh and we would, you know, remember to kind of have some balance so you can get all serious and really focus on learning a language, but you might come away with kind of learning how to calm down and not take yourself so seriously and, and laugh a little bit now and then. Um, they really are the ones who protect the way that, that we speak. So I think that it's, it's a, a really nice evening that you all put together so that you have teachers and speakers and some of us who are examples of not being able to grow up with our language, but then going on to make a life using our language and sharing it and others who did grow up with the language and then who came to making a life of sharing it. Um, thank you all for, for listening and maybe we can, we can take questions now. Um, we have a couple of minutes. I, uh, I have a couple of slides that I could share also for kind of rounding out the conversation. Um, so just to give some kind of witness to the struggles that language learners face, these are all things that have happened in the past and are still things that are being dealt with. So issues such as assimilation, disdain for indigenous peoples and heritage, um, isolation and erasure. These are all obstacles that we face when we try to learn our language because if I've learned anything being at Chicago for eight years, you can't learn the language um, reading books and being by yourself. You really have to learn language by talking with other people. Um, and then another the thing that often comes up for language learners of Ojibwe is this great variety of dialects or ways of speaking in different regions that people have. Um, so this affects pronunciation, vocabulary, inflection, spelling. Um, but these things don't have to hold us back. They don't have to stop us. So we can think of some ways to move forward. We can embrace that dialectal variation as a sign of abundance, affluence, and richness. So the reason there is so much variation is because the Ojibwe have spread throughout the whole Great Lakes region, a vast amount of land. And even within the Ojibwe, there's different ways of doing things, different ways of speaking. There's a lot of it that's shared, but that variation, while it might cause some trouble for learners, um, we should really think of that as a gift. And it shows that there's not just one way of doing things. And then um, I would say something that has been helpful for me is finding a community of folks who like to or practice the language um, to speak it. Um, I didn't grow up around anyone who spoke. I am focusing on it as an adult and I just, um, called up the language department at the Sioux one day and they said, oh yeah, you can talk to Leonard. And, and then I called Leonard and I talked to him for a little bit and he said, oh yeah, and you should talk to Susan. Uh, and Susan Asquith um, is a lifelong friend and student of Leonard's and his wife, Elizabeth. And she's been incredibly helpful and supportive in me in, in my journey through the language. Um, and in finding this community, we can recognize our continuity and our relations. And as part of my personal story, I, um, I knew Margaret uh, for a little bit when she was at the University of Michigan. And um, when I finally connected with Leonard and Susan, she, when I connected with them over the phone and she called me up and she said, hey, I'm going up to the Sioux, do you wanna come with me? And I hadn't even, I had a plan to go up there the following summer. But I said, sure, and she, she took me up there and we met everybody. Um, it was my first time meeting them in person. And then now that I'm at Michigan, I find that, or before I got to Michigan, I found that Alphonse, who teaches the language classes there, is childhood and lifelong friends with um, Leonard as well. 
And so there's really this continuity um, when you know who your teachers are and who your teachers' teachers are. Um, and it really helps to build that sense of community. And when you have that sense of community, you can really help each other to learn the language and lift each other up. And uh, I think that that is an important thing to remember that helps us to get over some of those obstacles that we might face. So, um, miigwech. Chi miigwech to all of us tonight. Um, please join me in appreciating our speakers in the chat box. At this time, we will move on to Q&A and we invite you to come off mute to ask questions and or add any questions you have into the chat box and we will share them with our presenters. Um, our first question comes from our very own Tim King who asks, do the students learn the Anishinaabe syllabary, AKA the alphabet? Alphonse, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, no, they don't. Uh, as little kids, they don't. Uh, they don't like to have anything to do with that. But I think in uh, teaching systems, uh, I'm referring to Canada. I don't know what what's going on here in the states as far as teaching kids. Uh, the language, but out there, uh, uh, they are starting to teach them uh, how to uh, how to uh, write the language. Something we've never even when I started school that didn't happen. So, and I know I've got some uh, relatives, some nieces who've got kids, and and uh, they are teaching those kids. They're not even in school yet. So <laughs> they're getting a head start on everything now. When I was in uh, their age, I, I used to make my own toys and they were all wooden toys. <laughs> now all they do is push buttons and they have an answer. Yeah, so I say they, uh, they're starting to learn uh, uh, writing. Probably not in Nishinaabemwin, but in English, because that's that's where they have to start now. Otherwise, if you don't if you don't know English when you start school, you're going to fall behind very quickly. And in order to make it, you have to learn how to communicate with the rest of the people that are moving ahead. That's what happened to me when I started. I had no idea, I never had any idea what the teacher was saying. And the teachers even at that time were writing to the agencies, the Indian agencies, telling the agencies that uh, natives were incapable of learning. Well, how could you learn if you don't understand what they're saying? You know, they were, they're, I, I don't recall anything that a teacher ever did in a classroom to learn something. Just watching mm -hmm. students from talking, that's, that's all it was. And then they were pretty heavy on uh, what you call capital punishment. So they'll come and smack you if you look the other way. <laughs> you know, people are, find it hard to believe that, but that's the truth. In fact, uh, just a couple of months ago, the Canadian uh, government paid me $10,000 uh, just for that. All I did was fill out a form and, and tell them how long I had been in the, uh, uh, what they called the day schools. This is long after they paid uh, the students who were in boarding schools. They paid those first, they, ba they paid them more than they paid us in uh, who stayed in the reserves. Uh, but probably not suffered as much as they did, but still the punishments were the same. That's the truth, folks. I would just add too, I mean, uh, in Milwaukee and in some of the other parts of the states where we have immersion schools now, 
we have kids who are learning Anishinaabe when alongside learning English. So of course they start out in little Head Start programs or play programs with families, um, kind of healthy baby programs or even kindergarten. And they're just hearing the language. And then when they start their regular literacy lessons, just like they start them for English, they start them in Anishinaabe one as well. Um, the school here in Milwaukee teaches a number of indigenous languages and Ojibwe is one of them. So we use the alphabet at the same time that you would use it with a kid who is you know, learning any language. Yeah, I was, uh... I did see some uh, documentary uh, about these uh, preschoolers, I call them. Uh, they're actually doing uh, a lot more than I used to see when I was in school in uh, age four or five. But I did get into the uh, uh, church choir at age five. I was able to sing the English um, songs. I didn't know they were English. I didn't know what I was singing, but I was singing. And the reason why I was able to do that is because my mother was a very good singer and she that's what she did every day. So I, I was mimicking everything she did. <laughs> and one of the students, I mean, uh, one of the t teachers heard how well I could sing uh, in English, she decided to put me in the church choir. That's when my singing career started. <laughs> I was there for a long time. Singing with the girls, you know, had the same voice. So eventually I was, I think I was 18 the last time I sang in church, I was singing bass. No more. No, 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 I couldn't do any other note anymore. So things have gone a long way since then. Um, another question coming from Tim is, do you interact with other tribes and discuss how to encourage learning of Anishinaabe? Are you talking to me? Yep. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, I do that all the time. There's a lot of communication from my end all the time. Uh, I don't seem to have any spare time anymore. And any time I turn the computer on, there's a bunch of questions I need to answer. And once I get started, it just seems like it drags. Next thing I know, three hours is gone and I still have my own things to do and I don't have time for it. So that's, that's what happens. Yeah, I do communicate with a lot of, uh, a lot of places, actually, uh, particularly in Toronto, Ontario, Sudbury, Ontario, Sault Ste. Marie, Wawa, Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, some in Saskatchewan, and some in Minnesota and occasionally Milwaukee. <laughs> so yes, I uh, encourage people to uh, keep on working on it even though uh, uh, I, I don't think they're going about it the right way and there's no telling them about it because, uh, well, maybe they know more, I don't know. So what I do is help anybody who, uh, who is asking for help. That's what I do. Thank you for that. Um, we have another question in the chat that asks, how important is it to put teaching energies into adults learning as a second language versus immersion for children? Uh, personally, I, I don't have patience for little kids as, as a group. I can teach one or two kids, but uh, in a classroom, I, I wouldn't have the 
energy to do it. Or um, uh, maybe I shouldn't call it energy. I, w I don't have the patience for it. Now, I have tried uh, teaching adults in a formal way. That lasted exactly two months. And when I put up some uh, very interesting lessons, they said, how do you expect us to learn this? <laughs> this is after explaining all how everything works. So that's that's the response I got. I think that's a good point, Alphonse, because not all teachers are alike, right? So any broad community that's trying to revitalize the language you have to work with the entire community across generations and you know that some teachers are going to be better with certain ages and certain learning styles than others so people kind of settle into the space in the community that works for them i would never want to tell a community you have to do everything aim it all at the little kids or aim it all at the adults you want to see if you can kind of mix it up and, and let teachers teach where they're comfortable and pull the whole community up together, I guess. Yeah, that would be that would be the ideal thing to happen, but it doesn't happen. I don't see it. Uh, Morgan, you've been working with the immersion programs out in Wisconsin, uh, especially with Duca Dotting. And I've heard it said that you can teach the younger kids, uh, but as they get older, you need to have trained adults who can then further enrich their language growth. If you don't have adults who are speakers or who are able to teach, then the young kids can't progress as well. Um, and I just wanted to highlight, there was also a question in the chat about what ages the students, uh, the young kids start learning in the immersion school. So the ones that I know about, um, so we have a school in Milwaukee that is, it's got kindergarten through eighth grade classes and they have language right from the beginning. So they have language incorporated into their preschool and kindergarten lessons, but they are not an immersion school. Um, they're trying to give everyone an introduction to the language. And then Wadukadading, which is up at La Couture Reservation in northern Wisconsin, they actually start with kindergarten and first grade and they go, I think it's up to sixth grade now, unless uh, I think with the whole pandemic, they've probably not been expanding the year as much. So this year, I think they're just doing virtual learning and may not have added a grade, but their model has been to add a grade every year. And they've actually, you know, just like you're saying, what they did was realize that you can try to give kids immersion, but you have to also be teaching the teachers at the same time and making sure that their language skills are getting more, more fluent, more complicated. Um, and there's also an elementary school and some immersion programs at Saginaw Chippewa in uh, Michigan. And then in Minnesota, Red Lake and Fond du Lac also have programs for kids. So in many programs, they're starting kids as early as they possibly can because they know any, any amount of language that kids can soak up when they're young is really good. And then the trick is, like you say, the very hard thing out of the 168 nations that we have that use this particular language, I don't know that we have any language programs right now that really get at high school years, especially um, those years where, like you say, if kids have gotten a good start in the language through elementary, maybe even still had experience in middle school, there's a gap. A lot of times they can go and take it at college again, but there's not as much going on in high school. Um, I can only think of like seven or eight where they have it, but those high school programs oddly are not quite usually as robust as the immersion schools or the younger programs because kids are having to fit it in between many, many things. In their high school years, there's sports and you know, all kinds of other things like you know, dating and friends and drama and things that, you know, distract them. And so at that age, kids, you know, find it harder to work on the language. Well, another problem with that is uh, we don't have enough uh, fluent speakers to be t teaching the language in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to my sister this afternoon and that's what she said. Uh, you have 
a lot of breaks in between. And I do have a friend who now, well, you know about uh, Nokma Center, mm -hmm. Margaret. Uh, I have uh, a neighbor, a friend who uh, teaches there now. I'm relying on him more and more. He's one of those who went through that experience. Uh, he learned his language in school and he's good at it. He said, I'm missing a lot of words, but uh, nobody seems to notice it, he said. <laughs> uh, so uh, he's, he questions me a lot about the language and uh, I, I work with him. He's the next generation because I, I can't keep on doing this myself. Well, it takes too much time to do everything. So, <clears throat> but I, I know it's workable but I also know it's uh, easier to do in a reservation where you have some speakers. If you don't have the speakers, then uh, you don't have what you need. That was the last question that we have time for this evening. I want to say Jim Aguetch to all of you again, and I'm going to hand things over to Andrea Wilkerson to share some announcements, announcements and introduce our closing song. Miigwech Zoe, Ani, Andrea, and Dijnikaz. My name is Andrea. I'm a program manager at the Office of Multi-Ethnic Student Affairs, working on the Native American Heritage Month as well as a former or perhaps lifelong Anishinaabe Moen student of Alphonse and Margaret. <laughs> um, and outside of taking Anishinaabe Moen classes at U of M, another way that I, and I know others, have been able to connect with the language is through singing our traditional songs. Um, and I've done this with the Swamp Singers that you can read all about on Ojibwe.net as well. Great website and resource. Um, I have the greatest love and appreciation for the time that I've spent part of this drum group where we come together to drum and sing in Anishinaabe Moen. But before I invite Margaret back to lead us on our way with a group traveling song, um, I've just got a couple of announcements to share with everyone. Um, so there is a survey link being sent out in the chat box. Yes. And <laughs> we invite you to please complete this, um, fill it out so we can continue to show uh, the university why events like this are so important. Um, and we also want to highlight our website. Here we go, I've got all of my things ready to go. Our NAM website for other upcoming events, especially since you're all here attending, hearing about Anishinaabe Moen, we've got a really exciting event coming up um, this Sunday at three o'clock. It's called As Told in Michigan's First Language, Books in Anishinaabe Moen. And this is gonna feature Margaret Noden in her uh, newest book of poetry, What the Chickadee Knows as well as Stacey Sheldon's children's book, The Adventures of Nimke. Uh, insider uh, news here, I think we might get a special guest appearance from Nimke, so you're all definitely gonna wanna check that out. And these are both books that were published this fall, so a really great opportunity to hear from both of these amazing authors um, and get to learn a little bit more about what they're up to and the books themselves. All right, so at this time, I'm gonna invite the Swamp Singers and everyone else who would like to join in. We're gonna send the group off with a traveling song. I know we have Alphonse to thank very much for helping us um, pronounce and get through all these verb conjugations <laughs> and everything. So chi mi guach Alphonse. Um, Margaret, would you like to go ahead and lead us on our way? Sure, I will try and share my screen so everybody can see the lyrics if I got it here. And then, did it work? Do you see it? We just see a, well, I just see a little tiny strip. Does anyone know? <laughs> I gotta pull it way up here. I might have to stop and then go out and then okay. come back in. just sorry, sorry for that. I had it oh. down so I could see your face, Andrea. It was oh. good to see you doing your announcements, but I better bring it back up here so we can all see. Right. Uh, okay, I'll try again. There we go. Is that better? Yes, there we go. And now you see the whole thing. Okay. So um, just because we really like to make sure, I think it's always a balance. You get to see sometimes where there's the language and the direct translation, 
we should always be trying to give you some times where you're hearing things that are new to you and you get to see if you can translate them yourselves. Um, but then this song is a good one for you to learn some of the um, basic things about the language. It's a song that has four different parts to it and it's got what we call vocables in between. So you get the vocables, what my daughters would lovingly call the way <laughs> and you get the way to kind of learn the tune. But then as Andrea mentioned, we had spent time with Alphonse and Howard who had taught us how to make sure we were conjugating right. That was a thing at the time, a lot of people were still working out. So what you see in these words, I think you can see my cursor on here, right? When I share. <laughs> Yep. So not a mo. if you guys are there and you want to like, you can have your mics off and do it and we can just all deal with echo, that's okay with me. Or you can have your, your um, on or off, either one doesn't matter to me. I guess what I'm saying though, is you should try to repeat after and, and say some of these as part of your kind of learning and practice today. So not a mo is to help. And when you have not a mo in the middle, you have to put pieces around that to say, who's helping who. So Ganada Moamin, that's saying Gejemnido, we're asking Gejemnido to help us. So Ganada Moamin, no, Gejemnido is saying Gejemnido, will you help us? And we just repeat that twice. So Ganada Moamin, you know, Gejemnido. And people sometimes ask, why is it Gejemnido versus Gechimonido versus uh, any other names that you could use? There's lots of ways to either say great spirit or creator versus, um, you know, they all mean similar things, but there's actually multiple ways. So there, so there isn't one of these that's wrong or one that's more right than the others. And then guayak is straight or correct. So guayak, je, bimose, yang. So bimose is to walk and then yang is saying that we're doing it. If we're all singing to each other, technically we could say yin, but the way it is here is yang. Ba ma pi is a way of saying kind of see ya or later. Um, literally, it really is just sort of saying so long. It's not really saying the word see you. Giga waba me gom. That's the part that says to see. So wabam, wabam is to see someone. Ga is the future part. And giga waba me gom. That's we all will see you all, plural. So now that you learned this first verse, all of the rest of them are similar. The only thing that changes is this wabam verb changes from giga wabma gom to giga wabba me go. And the difference there is whether you are all as a group saying goodbye to another group or the second version down here, it's all of us as a group saying goodbye to one person. And then the third line down, this is how one person says goodbye to a group. And the very last one is how one person says goodbye to one other person. So it shows how beautiful our language is and how the way we add things both to the front and the back of a word is a way of kind of sandwiching that meaning around the verb. So I will go back to the top here and we'll, we'll go through and sing it. I know that Jasmine could sing it with me if she wants. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. You guys feel free to unmic if you want. As a teacher, I'm pretty used to singing for a group. So this is not about singing well. This is about you guys getting to learn. And you can, if you want to go to the site, it's on there so that you can be the teacher and teach somebody else later today or this week or sometime, you know, when you want to share a song with people. So, Margaret, yeah. I was gonna say before, you, since you're sharing the same page that the lyrics are on, at the top, you could also um, play the recording if you wanted to, and you won't have the issue that I had because it's all on the same page. Oh, if you wanted to. we could. But I think, I think the recording will go too fast. I think oh. I learned the hard way last time I did this. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, everybody in the group was like, wait, you just walked through this slow. And now you're playing something really fast. The recordings are great because the recording is the actual live, real Miss Gwasening Nugamojik, the Swamp Singers. So I encourage everybody to listen to it later. But I'll maybe try and do this and 
do it slow. I think I'll try. <laughs> but I know people can join in if they want. And it's always, I think another thing that I always say is when we put the songs here on the website, we tell people to use them and share them. The songs that are here are ones that everyone who put them here gave permission to have out in the world and to share. There's some things that we wouldn't put on a website, but this site is dedicated to teaching people. Um, so really, if it's on here, feel free to listen to it later. And um, I'll try and sing it kind of a slower way now. But the other thing about our songs is it's getting everybody in a group and singing and feeling like you're doing something together. It's not always about quality. <laughs> so I may not be an opera singer, but we'll all have fun together, right? And we'll all breathe in and breathe out and be healthy together. <laughs> so we'll go through and it starts with the vocables. And then you have a verse and then the vocals and a verse and it goes all the way through like that. And that's how we can kind of end it out for those that want to join in. Ready everybody? March ta da. Way hey ah hey ah hey ah hey ah hey ah hey ah hey hey ah hey ah hey ah Way, hey, you can hear it echo across space and time like you start the line and then it finishes it's great I think it's also good to say that traditionally we would sing a traveling song when people leave us from this world to another world so since in particular we were remembering people that have taught us and aren't here anymore 
it's a traveling song for them, but also everybody who spent the last hour and a half with us. And as you go back about your business, be safe and be well. Yes, miigwech to all of our speakers and to all of you singing along. This was really wonderful. Um, we wish you all safe travels and we'll see you again soon. Bamapi. Bamapi. Miigwech. Bamapi. Miigwech.